Well, Megan, I've been wearing Vionic shoes for over three years now, but this month, my trusted shoe brand and I entered a new phase of our relationship, international travel. Well, Sarah, that is a serious commitment, (laughs) right? You can't just pack any shoe for a trip abroad. It's got to be stylish enough for those major cosmopolitan cities. It's got to be sturdy enough for trains, planes, buses, and city streets. And obviously, it's got to be comfortable enough to support your feet over many, many miles of walking. Well, no surprise, my Vionics were up to the task. I had two pair with me, a pair of casual sneakers in a cool gray color, and then a weatherproof suede ankle boot that I swear still looks brand new after 10 days on soggy sidewalks. Megan, the only time my feet hurt the entire trip was New Year's Eve when I made the mistake of wearing a pair of booties not from Vionic. So I'll just leave that data right here for you. Okay, well, that's pretty conclusive, Sarah. Vionic has the best curated styles to get you ready for whatever 2024 has in store, whether it's jet setting like Sarah or keeping up with busy mom life on this side of the pond. They even offer a 30 day guarantee, wear them, love them or return them for a full refund within 30 days. And we've got a great deal for you. Use code the mom hour 15 at checkout for 15% off your entire order at vionicshoes.com when you log into your account. That's a one time use only. Bionic Shoes, wearable well-being for your feet. Hi, I'm Sarah. And I'm Megan. We're two moms with eight kids between us, from little to grown. We're in different areas of the country and in different stages of life. But we both know that motherhood's a lot easier when real moms share tips and encouragement. And remind you that it's really all going to be okay. We're not experts. We're parents who've been there. We're not perfect. We're real. Welcome to the Mom Hour. Hey, everyone, and welcome to episode 312 of the Mom Hour. I am Sarah Powers here with Megan Francis. Hey, Megan. Hi, Sarah. I feel like I wish you were here with me in person. So maybe we could pull that off like, I don't know, this week, tomorrow. Do you think? Um, Yes, it's totally going to happen. So by the time anyone is listening to this episode, I will be packing my bags to come to Santa Barbara, which I am so excited for. And I'll be there like tomorrow in future listening land. Yes. And we are both fully vaccinated. We've been looking forward to this. Definitely watch our, I don't know. I always say watch our Instagram so we can get up to some antics together. And then also sometimes we're having so much fun. We forget to post to Instagram. So I'm not going to promise anything. Sarah, it's been a while. Can you remind me what antics are? No, no, I don't. I don't think I, yeah, it will be. Neither of us know. We don't know. There will be antics. Um, Okay, what are we talking about today? We are talking about kitchen storage and organization, and this is going to be really fun. Um, We did an episode about our fantasy kitchens a few weeks ago. It was a more than mom episode. Actually, that was also the week that the wrong episode posted in its place for a few hours. That's right. Yes, it did. It did mean that some listeners um, never listened to it. So it's there. It was always there. It just got replaced by something else for just a few hours. So go back and listen. It's a really fun conversation about our like dream kitchens. And then today is nothing about that. Today is our current kitchens and specifically like where we're putting stuff and what challenges we're having in the the kitchen storage and organization realm of life. Yeah, I'm excited about this one because, as you know, I have had vastly different kitchen experiences over the past, I guess, like five years, four years where I've gone from like big to small to big. And that definitely does pose some challenges organizationally. So I hope I don't sound too complainy, um, no. but we're also going to have some solutions as well. And I'll try to get, be positive in that part. And this <laughs> is one of those topics that I think everybody likes to peek behind the cupboards and like maybe one person's really simple solution is a little light bulb for you. I find when I listen to podcasts like this, it just makes me want to go and putter around and like, you know, just tidy up a little bit. It doesn't take an overhaul to feel better about your kitchen organization. So yeah. Agreed. Well, before we get started, let's just both briefly describe our kitchen layouts, mostly focusing on things like the cabinet storage and maybe a pantry if you have one. And I'd also love to know when your kitchen was built and or remodeled. So we don't need to pass judgments on our kitchens yet. We will get to that. But just do you want to just describe your physical kitchen layout right now, Megan? Sure. So I live in an old farmhouse that has been built onto And so my guess when I look at my kitchen is that that at one time was a different room and not the kitchen Um, Mm. and that there was an addition put on. In fact, the kitchen itself might be completely new. Like the kitchen may have once been where the dining room is. It just Mm. you can kind of tell that the woodwork is newer 
And, but it's like, they tried to make the most of this space, which had to follow the silhouette of the house. Right. So, Mm -hmm. um, it's this, it's a big kitchen. It's got a big Island. It's got two pantries, a a big walk-in and then a little one and, um, tons and tons of cabinet space. But a lot of those kinds of cabinets that are like over anyone's head, you know, the useless ones um, that you can't really reach. And I believe like just looking at the appliances and um, the bric-a-brac, I guess, it seems to me this kitchen was probably remodeled in the 90s. Like that's probably where the appliances went in. There's like, um, Mm -hmm. you know, a built-in range in the island and like the the fridge and and range are very old. Um, A lot of glass and like curly Q wood working, Mm -hmm. like the stuff that looks very 90s. And I think probably refreshed again, maybe once there's granite now. And I think they might've done a new sink, but they Mm -hmm. didn't do it very well. So like, that's kind of like falling in on itself. But anyway, it looks, when you walk in, it looks bright and clean and pretty and big and spacious. Um, And that's just where I'll leave it for now. Okay. Because sometimes looks can be deceiving. (laughs) Yes, exactly. And cabinets are not, not all cabinetry is created equal as we will dive in when it comes to storage, like usage is key and accessibility is key. So my house was built in 1977, which out here on the West Coast, especially in California, um, there's just not as many old houses. So to me, that feels like, you know, it's not old, like a 100 year old farmhouse, but it's not a new house. Um, So 1977 build. I know I think there was a pretty significant remodel in the 90s that I think turned it into more of an island spacious, like modern kitchen. I have a feeling it was a galley kitchen or had some kind of weird seventies half wall or something, but now it opens to a family room. So it's, it's that kind of open concept, great room. It has a, it has a big Island. The range is on the Island. And then before we bought it, it was also, um, there were some things done to the kitchen that were brand new. Some, some lovely things, some nice countertops and a new sink and some new appliances. What, what hasn't been updated is the cabinetry. So I'll talk about that later, but some of the cabinetry cabinetry and, and drawers, I'm going to say is also nineties, probably same as yours. Um, even though they did some other, they did some nice cosmetic things and they repainted the cabinets and stuff, um, before we bought it. But the storage I would say is nineties era storage, even though the appliances, appliances are newer. So, and you will be in it tomorrow in this fantasy time that we're living. (laughs) I'm so excited. I love it. Sarah, you know, when someone's trying to sell me something, I can be pretty skeptical. Maybe it's my rebel tendencies, but having some healthy doubts has definitely kept me from wasting money on every cool product the algorithm sends my way. You know what's not too good to be true, though? Our sponsor, Ritual, and their clinically backed Essential for Women 18 Plus multivitamin. Yeah, Megan, that's so true. We both love these vitamins because they're made with high quality and traceable key ingredients in clean bioavailable forms. And they're gentle on an empty stomach with a fresh minty essence in every bottle. So you don't have to worry about nausea if you're a bit relaxed about when you take them. I'm also a big fan of Ritual's sustainability standards. They use scientific tools to select lower carbon packaging, prioritize sustainably sourced ingredients, and set ambitious climate goals. No more shady business. Ritual's Essential for Women 18 Plus is a multivitamin you can actually trust. Get 20% off your first month for a limited time at ritual.com slash the mom hour. Start Ritual or add Essential for Women 18 Plus to your subscription today. That's ritual.com slash the mom hour for 20% off. We are welcoming back Dr. Mom Butt Balm as a sponsor today. And Megan, I guess you must be back to changing diapers again, right? Now that you have a step grandbaby in the mix. I have changed a few lately, Sarah. And yeah, it really takes me back to that memory from early motherhood. I actually always enjoyed diaper changes unless they were the really gross toddler ones or if there was diaper rash involved. Oh my gosh. Yes. I remember being so stressed out, like gearing up for the saddest diaper change ever. Your baby knows it's going to hurt. You know, they're going to cry. It is just the worst. And having to use goopy, gross diaper rash cream definitely didn't help. Dr. Mom Butt Balm was developed by a mom who's also a doctor when she couldn't find any traditional products that worked for her baby's persistent diaper rash. This pediatrician approved formula is made with all quality ingredients and no artificial dyes or preservatives. And since it's easy to remove, you won't have to wipe and wipe to get it off of your baby's skin. That is so important, especially if they're already a little chafed. And I love the way this formula feels. A little goes a long way. 
Don't let diaper rash come between you and your baby. Shop for Dr. Mom Butt Balm online at Amazon or Walmart today. Okay, Sarah. So uh, again, to kick off this episode, the first thing we're really going to dive in on are sort of the annoying, possibly nitpicky problems about um, our individual kitchens. And I, and I want to just say this is, I think kitchens are definitely one of those grass is always greener things mm-hmm. where mm-hmm. like, honestly, what I am annoyed about with my kitchen two years ago in my old tiny kitchen, I would have been thrilled to have, but then there are some things I really miss about that tiny kitchen. So, um, just with that in mind that we're, we're complaining, but it's like good natured complaining, right? So let's do some of that. Let's do some good natured complaining. I think it's also validating for, to think about the little things that irk you. We spend so much time in our kitchens. And so like, yes, I agree. This is complaining within a context here. So my first little gripe is it is storage related, although it's not cabinet and drawer storage. I have a a big white canister on the countertop that I keep spatulas and wooden spoons, um, you know, for stirring and and cooking. And and I have some of those things live in a drawer, but the most often used ones live in a a white ceramic canister, which I like that. I like having them there. It looks nice. The problem is some of my more recent spatulas and things have this rubberized very fat, uh, handle. Mm. Do you know what I yes. mean? So it's yes. like, and, and a few of them are like cheap Amazon purchases. I, and they're not consistent. So the, the actual tools in this canister are, it's a very mishmash hodgepodge. And I, my frustration right now is when I go to stick something in, I want it to have a very skinny, like smooth shaft, like a wooden spoon, you know, just the old wooden right. spoons where it's but they often have these, they're probably trying to be ergonomical or something like that's an what easy I was going to say. Grip. I think that's yeah. the ergonomically correct, um, <laughs> you know, version of the utensils, which feel good in the hand, but don't work in the, but they don't in the slide into that yeah. canister. And so it's like a, it's a micro, a micro irritant that it's just like, I try to put them away or get something out and you pull the spatula and like three other things will come with it because they're stuck on that, um, that tacky, like foamy, yeah. do you know what I mean? Like the, the grip. Yeah. So. There you go. Um, that is totally a real problem. Um, <laughs> and I have had this problem because I love the look of, I love the look and the ease of utensils in a canister. I used to use like a big stainless steel pitcher I had gotten at a, um, at an antique store, but the, the, op- the mouth is too narrow. So then mm-hmm. I upgraded to a ceramic, mine's yellow, but a big ceramic yellow pit, uh, canister. And it works really, really well, except I find that tongs, tend to get stuck really easily. So I try to have like one, you know, one yeah. tong in and one tong out, but the kids don't always do that. So that can throw the whole thing off. And I honestly think maybe I just have too many utensils. When I really think yeah. about how many of them I'm using actually like even on a weekly basis, I think I always reach for the same slotted spoon, the yeah. same. I have two sets of tongs. I always reach for the same one. Um, I've just got my specific things that I use and the rest of the things that aren't used as often, I could probably put in a drawer the problem is for a while, I was so sick of the canister thing that I put them all in the drawer. And that was terrible because then they would all become this big mass and like they would get stuck, you know, mm-hmm. trying to open the drawer, they get stuck yes. and all that. So I went back to the canister thing, but I agree like that grippy, overly large bottom does throw things off. So I am just yes. going to commiserate with you there that that is a real struggle. Fat bottom spatulas are <laughs> where we're starting. <laughs> Yes. Okay. Well, uh, it sounds like a queen song to me, but I'm just going to move <laughs> forward um, because mine also is kind of a frivolous, dumb complaint, but it is random appliances. And I've already shared on the show, I think, and at least with you, Sarah, personally, that I don't really like to have a lot of countertop appliances. That's something I think I've been pretty good in the past about keeping under control. Yeah. And now I wound up with a couple more than that I really want, but I'm in the process of well, I'm just going to take them down, leave them on the side of the road. Someone will come get them. They always do. Um, but I also have a whole lot of little mini appliances. I believe almost all of them are left over from when I was married because I don't remember buying any of them. And I'm not really someone who buys that sort of thing. I typically am pretty Spartan about what I use in my kitchen and I don't want to have extra things that plug in yeah, um, me or things that have blades. Like I just don't like that. So, um, I'm looking around. I think what actually happened is when I got divorced and before I moved into the tiny home that I lived in, which wasn't actually Mm -hmm. a tiny home, but just felt like a tiny home. I put it all in storage, like just like in bins in the basement. Right. Yeah. And then when I moved into this house, I didn't bother keeping anything put away because this kitchen has so much cabinet space. It's huge. So now I look in my cabinets and I'm like, okay, so I have this like 
bullet style blender that you make drinks with, you know, like mm-hmm. smoothies. Yep. But not only does it have multiple attachments, it has like multiple, like five or six different individual sized cups so mm-hmm. that you could make a different smoothie, I guess, every day of the week and never have to wash the dishes. I don't really get it. Like, why can't you yeah. just have one and wash it? But it was probably an as seen on TV. I definitely yes. did not buy that. Um, <laughs> a mini chopper that I haven't used. I mean, I'm going to say in at least four years and it's kind of cool. It's the sort of thing you, you know, you put the vegetable in this little thing and then you slap, you, it's like slap chop, but not that, but you like hit okay. the little thing and it goes, dee, 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 and like the blade goes around and around and around and it chops up your stuff. Um, I never used it because I don't really mind just pulling out a knife and cutting right. things imperfectly. I'm also not someone who's very concerned about my chop looking good. Like I'm into the rough chop, the rustic chop, as I like to call it. <laughs> so, um, I just don't care enough to clean something like that or deal with the blades. I've got a coffee ground grinder. I don't drink coffee. I have not had or coffee bean. I mean, grinder. I haven't had coffee beans in my house in four years, at least. Um, I do have an immersion blender. I will take credit or blame for that one. That is mine. I bought that and I love it, but it has several attachments and I only ever really use one of them. So with all that, there's just cords and blades and like, like plastic thingies and yes. l- covers everywhere. And I kind of want to just throw it all out, but that feels so wasteful. I don't know. Well, okay. I know you aren't asking for advice, but I feel like you could throw probably 40% of that out listening to you talk. Like you could throw a bunch out. So that would make less stuff, which would be slightly less crowded. Um, And I know as we go through, we're going to talk about things like bins and baskets and stuff like that. But I wonder if with your, um, we're going to talk about pantries, but it sounds like you're not lacking space. So maybe there's like, um, just even a box or like an old bin that could take the rest of it and then put it like in a place you don't go as often. So it doesn't annoy you quite as often. Maybe that's a good idea because honestly, sometimes space is a liability when it comes to keeping things organized too much space, things just spread out and it doesn't, there's no, there's no, um, necessary home for things to be in. And so they just kind of take on a life of their own. So I actually think it's a pretty good idea. Yeah. Yeah. I do keep thinking maybe someday I'll ground, you know, I'll grind coffee beans for a friend or something, but so far it ain't happened. So no, (laughs) you'll head to your artist, your local artisan coffee shop and have them do it there. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Okay. Well, that leads perfectly to my next uh, little challenge. And that is that I don't have a pantry. And as you were talking, I was thinking about what did we used to do with all that overflow stuff? And my last two houses have both had walk-in pantries, not gigantic by any means, but enough that you could walk in and the door would close and there was some shelving and stuff. And so in our last house, and this could work for you, we bought one of those Sterilite drawers um, that you can stack, you know, you can get a whole bunch of them and practically create like a dresser almost. And they're, they're like a big um, plastic Sterilite drawer. And we just had one at the, on the floor of the pantry. And it, that's where all the cords and the immersion blender and stuff like that were. So that worked well for us, but we're not talking about my old house. We're talking about my current <laughs> house, which has no pantry. Um, there's plenty of space in the kitchen, but there's not an abundance of cabinets. There's a normal amount of cabinets, um, and then no pantry. And then they added this set, like an extra set of cabinets, um, off to the side that they called a pantry, but it's just, it's just a couple more cupboards. Basically they are tall, like, like, so there's two of them and it's, it's the height of a person. And so I guess that's our pantry. But I don't have any place to store like the crock pot and and the small appliances Mm. that you were talking about. And I'm very similar to you. I don't want things on my counter. I've actually gotten more particular about that as I've gotten older and my kids are older and I have a little more control over my domain. I'm not as in the weeds. I really like kind of a Spartan countertop. And then I don't like to buy that stuff. So I'm very similar to you. We don't have a lot, but we have a food processor. We have a crock pot. The blender, we do, we use the blender every day. So that stays in a cupboard down below, but there's just not a lot of extra storage space within the kitchen. So we are keeping stuff like that in the garage, which is a short walk. You go through the rec room and out to the garage and we have a lot of good shelving, but it gets dusty. So if I go get the crock pot, I kind of feel like I I have to wash it and and then I forget what's out there. And then, like you said, (laughs) the little parts and pieces are out there. So it's not ideal. And I'm thinking back to my old kitchen, um, which the room itself was probably smaller than this one, but there, there was more storage. So again, it's the, 
the miscellany and where to keep it yeah. and then how to like remember what's there. I feel like sometimes I don't even use something because I forget I have it. You have it's just it. that yep. out of sight, out of mind. And then there's something about going into the garage to get something I'm going to cook with that just feels like kind of a bummer. Like I'd rather just like, eh, I just I'll stay in here and do something else. So. Yeah. Um, all of that makes a lot of sense. I mean, I have had um, pantries and not had pantries and I do have an abundance of pantries right now, but I didn't have one in my last house and I didn't have one in the house before that. And there is something about storing. Like I remember having like a little tea, um, like a little tea set up outside of my kitchen, like in one of those little rolling cabinets you can get like at Ikea mm -hmm. or whatever. I think I got mine on overstock and that had all my tea supplies. And I had to really train myself to go over there to use it because there was just simply wasn't room, even though the kitchen was big enough, I guess there wasn't really room for all the stuff because there was no yeah. pantry. So yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, I'm going to, my next, um, complaint or I, I don't know, annoying problem kind of is a large category with lots of subcategories under it. So, and it sets up, I think all of my other issues. And one of them, the, the main issue here is that I have this big, weird kitchen layout. Um, things are all over the place. So the way it's laid out, when you first walk in, there's like the sink and a little bit of cabinetry um, and countertops on the, on the sink side. And that's old. Like those are the old wooden um, drawers that like get stuck a lot, yeah. you know. And then in the middle, there's a very, a very substantial island. And then another countertop that runs along one wall. The other wall is windows. And like two big cabinets up and two big cabinets down and there's cabinets in the island. And then on the far wall, there's another whole long like wall to or, um, room, you know, wall to wall countertop with cabinets up and down and the ones up are glass and the ones down aren't. Mm -hmm. And so there's tons of storage space. It's ridiculous. But the thing is it, there's also really cool, like built in features like slide out cutting boards. Mm. But the slide out cutting boards are nowhere near the trash cans oh, and they're yeah. enormous. So there's like no way I never use them because I'm not going to slide out this like four by, you know, three cutting board, oh chop gosh. up all my veg on it and then somehow scrape up the stuff and walk five feet to the trash. Like that doesn't make any sense. Um, there's too many random drawers that kind of could hold whatever I want them to, but don't really. There's like one thing in them because I haven't figured out how to use them. It's just incoherent. So, yes. um, it's just incoherent. That's all. That's really the only way to put it. It doesn't make a lot of sense. It's just big for the sake of being big. And my pantry is big. And during COVID times, I really did a lot of like, you know, doomsday prepper shopping <laughs> and every shelf was full of stuff and all very, um, very organized. But over the course of the next 14 months, I realized that like some of that stuff, unless I just used it, I mean, it was just going to go bad. So yeah. even that my use of that pantry has now kind of been relegated to like two shelves because I just don't yeah. need the whole thing anymore. So it just feels like things are just kind of everywhere. And that will that will kind of play into my next couple of complaints. Well, it's so interesting. I know you're not going to be in this house forever, but if you were going to be there longer. I would be so curious what like a kitchen organization person, you know, I, I think we have some yeah. even in our audience, like people who've really gotten good at like that kind of thinking about setting up your kitchen for efficiency. And, um, when you move into any house, like where you put things and it yeah. sounds like you just have so much space and so much storage and the way the kitchen was built and remodeled over time, like hasn't allowed it to make sense. So I would be so curious what like what a, like an expert would do with that space and like what little things they would have you tweak, but you're not going to be there forever. So I guess no, we'll and I actually that. have a, I have a feeling that if I were the sort of person who really wanted to collect kitchen things, there would be a great way to use all that space, but I'm not. Mm -hmm. And I really don't want to, I came from a, a kitchen that was a fifth of the size of this kitchen. Yeah. And I brought those things for the most part that I had streamlined everything, my dishes, my glassware, everything. And I don't really want to now just acquire a bunch more stuff. So I have a feeling they would tell me just not to use yeah. like one entire wall of cabinets because there's no reason. I don't need them. At least I could use them for something else that has nothing to do with kitchen. I could right. put board games in them or, or linens or yeah. something. Um, probably the fact that I'm trying to make use of too many different areas in my kitchen is what's throwing me off. 
Yeah. I'm trying to yeah. use it all and there's there's no reason. I don't have enough stuff. I don't right. want enough stuff. So Right. You don't want yeah. to fill it. Yeah. That exactly. Makes sense. Yeah. Well, I have some funky cabinetry that again, I think this was a nineties kitchen remodel, if I know my home correctly. And somebody thought they were being really clever about the type of like you open a cabinet door and then there could be like a, a thing that rolls out on little rollers or there could be like another compartment behind it. And there are a couple very strange. They look normal from the outside. It just looks like a cabinet door. But one is in a corner and you open it and then you pull out this this kind of a half circle thing swings out. And then there's like this other thing that that slides out. So somebody thought long and hard about the inner workings of this cabinetry and it just doesn't make sense for the type of stuff mm. that we are storing down there. And I, well, okay. I have a bad back periodically and actually it's been out this past week, but because of that, I'm really sensitive to any, anything that requires me to be bending over for a long time. Like, okay, I'm going right. to bend over and open this cupboard door. Then I'm going to swing out this magic compartment and then I'm going to, and then I have to like leaf, like leaf through yes. things to get to yes. the right one. Yes. It's yeah. like, I feel like they wanted to maximize space and there's some, I mean, you could hide some secret stuff back there, it, but it is very bizarre. And then right next to that, there is this tall, skinny, it pulls out like, you know, a trash can drawer, like how you can have your trash on a drawer that pulls out on rollers. It pulls out yeah. like that, but it's half the width. It's very tall and skinny and it has a few shelves. So it's like pulling out, it's like pulling out a shelf and all we can think is spices. Mm. So it's not quite a drawer. I don't know. It's not even. I think I know what you're talking about. They, yeah. they, they almost have like these little, is it like, um, yeah, like you could maybe stash like two glass spice bottles right next to each other. Yeah. And then like a row of them going back. I think that probably mm -hmm. is a spice cabinet. Yeah. But and to there, me, that's not ever the way shelves. I would want to use my spices because no. that's not the way I want to look at them. Right. And it, no. And it's very strange. And we end up keeping rolls of uh, foil and parchment paper because it's, it's really long and skinny and it's got three a top shelf, a middle shelf and a bottom. So I guess, I, I, you know, all the love goes out to whoever designed this probably as their dream kitchen and had an idea for each of these things. But that's the thing about moving into someone else's idea of an ideal kitchen is like, I, I'm not sure what to use these things for. And we already have kind of limited cabinet space. So then to have some weird funky ones, it's like, I, I just want to open a door and have right. a shelf and put something on it. Is that too much to ask? I feel like a lot of these things, Sarah, you said you think yours was remodeled in the 90s. I think a lot of this stuff came from this 90s like obsession with, well, I'm not going to say it was only a 90s thing. I think it kind of came about in the 90s, like this obsession with maximizing space and having mm -hmm. solutions for everything. Yeah. Um, because when I look at my very 90s kitchen, I can see that there were things that were put in very intentionally. And I'm sure at the time they thought was very thoughtful, like things that pull out and slide yeah. out and spin and all this stuff. Yeah. And I mean, yeah, the like the 70s style lazy Susan, that's great. And they really do. They have a purpose, but you don't need one of those in every single cabinet unless you plan to maximally fill yeah. every cabinet in your kitchen with stuff. And I feel like those two things went together. It was like this 80s, 90s, like more, more, more stuff uh -huh. mixed with like this kind of um, very utilitarian now we have more stuff that's a solution for your stuff. Yes. And also things that roll. Yes. Yeah. So I, I also have some stuff like that in my kitchen where I'm like, this in theory is great, but I don't like I and my um, I have like a really big cabinet that I put my pots and pans in. I actually love that. I, I wish more kitchens had um, a cabinet that opens and is enormous. Like you open yes. it with this huge door and but the thing is, then I don't want it to micromanage me inside the cabinet. Yeah, the whole point exactly. is. Don't tell I me just want to be my pots. Just, exactly. I just want to put them where I want to put them. I don't want now there's like a, like a divider to tell me I have to have little ones over here and like the lids have to go in this lid holder. Like, no, just let me do my thing. So yeah. And all those pieces do break. So yeah. I've got a couple that are starting to kind of fall apart in my kitchen and they don't last forever. I, I sometimes I just think simplicity. Yes. And we, now friend. there's so many things you can buy to um, like little separators and things that they don't come with your cabinets. You go to the container store or target and you buy them. And I think that would be my preference because then I can decide, I'll decide how to store my pots. And if I need a lid separator, I'll go get one at target. You're the decider. I'm the decider. All right. Well, um, I, I guess just kind of riffing on this whole complaint about bizarre layouts and I'll try to make this one quick. My kids 
put away dishes often and they just have really bizarre methods for putting things away. And I've kind of, because I don't have a really, I don't know, def, well-defined um, organization system yet for my kitchen. I've kind of let them run with it, but yeah. they put stuff away just wherever they feel like. So like, for example, all the sport bottles and travel mugs they're putting with the glasses, but then Clara decided all the lids should go in another cabinet on the other side of the room. And again, and I'm, because I'm, you have so much space, they, <laughs> there's, they have too many options. Right. And I'm kind of like, this makes literally no sense. So I keep going, let's just move all the sport m- mugs and travel mugs to the lids or the lids to the mugs. Like why, but I can't train them. I'm grateful to do the dishes. I'm just going to roll with it. It just doesn't make any sense. So that's all. Yeah. That's like my, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's really not something I can fix unless I micromanage them doing the dishes and I don't want to do that either. So yeah, I get it. I get it. Well, my last one, you're going to see this when you're in my house. And you and I had a funny conversation about this where I had you searching for vintage bread boxes for me because I decided I wanted a bread box. Um, And this is a true storage conundrum. There is an under under counter, like I'm going to call it like a cave, like a cavity. It's in the corner of the kitchen where the end of the counter, you can reach back farther than you think. It parallels the fridge. And it's, it's a huge amount of space. And right now we keep our very large toaster oven there. And, you know, I don't like a lot of appliances on the counter and our toaster is really big. So it's nice to be able to push it all the way back in this cubby, like, you know, out of sight, out of mind. But the problem is it's also where bread product bags go to die. And I really don't like half folded over bags of chips and hot dog buns. We don't, we don't have a pantry again. The cupboard storage is kind of full. So we end up tucking chips and bread bags on either side of the toaster and shoving them in this way back area. And so I do love the idea of a bread box. I think a bread box would work perfect in that area and it would solve my errant bread bag problem. But it, then it presents a um, the toaster oven challenge because we don't have a lot of counter space either. So when you are in my house and maybe we can show it on the old Insta. Maybe you can help me <laughs> love it. help me solve this area. It's a good place. It's a good. I like that there's this vast cavity of space, but I and it's, it's trying like to do two things, back, which is mm-hmm. cool. But yeah, yeah, I can't wait to see it with my eyeballs because right now I've only seen it with a camera or you know a picture. Yeah, it's hard to it's hard to really get a context for yes. what's happening there. So yes. yeah, all right. Well, Sarah, have we done enough complaining? Uh, we have. I mean, we have very lovely kitchens, but I think our listeners can relate to the little things right. that bug you. Yeah. Yeah. Sarah, when my kids were little, I was always pretty torn on whether to give them a daily multivitamin. I knew that modern kids' diets have some pretty big nutritional gaps, but I also knew that most children's vitamins are basically candy in disguise. They're filled with sugar, they have all kinds of chemicals and preservatives in them, and I was like, why would I give these to my kids? Luckily, two dads recognized the problem and came up with a solution, Haya, the pediatrician-approved, super-powered, chewable vitamin. Haya fills in the most common gaps in modern children's diets to provide the full body nourishment our kids need with a yummy taste they love. Formulated with the help of nutritional experts, Haya is pressed with a blend of 12 organic fruits and veggies, then supercharged with 15 essential vitamins and minerals, including vitamin D, B12, C, zinc, folate, and many others to help support immunity, energy, brain function, mood, concentration, teeth, bones, and more. Your first shipment comes with a cute bottle that has fun stickers your kids can use to decorate it too. My kids always loved that. And we've worked out a special deal with Haya for their best-selling children's vitamin. Receive 50% off your first order. To claim this deal, go to HayaHealth.com slash MomHour. This deal is not available on their regular website. Go to H-I-Y-A-H-E-A-L-T-H.com slash MomHour and get your kids the full body nourishment they need to grow into healthy adults. Okay, Sarah. So now we're going to put a a little bit more of a positive spin on this, like takedown of our individual kitchen organization (laughs) situations. So what is working for you? You go first. Sure. So this is something I've done for several years and it is to have a small wire basket under my sink for dirty kitchen linens. And that would be washcloths and it might be cloth napkin. We use cloth napkins even for our very casual meals. So we go through Mm -hmm. quite a bit of dish towels and, and washcloths and napkins and stuff like that. And I think what has worked really well is it's a kind of pretty wire basket. It has that like rustic French slightly, it's not rusty. Um, cause that would be gross. That would get on the laundry, but it has a distressed 
wire look to it right. without getting rusty. So somebody must have thought that through because rust wouldn't do well. It would get all over the wet, damp linens. Um, but it is, a, I'm going to say the size of like one of those, like a 12 by 12 cube size. It's not super big. Um, so I do that laundry pretty frequently, but even the kids know where to put like a stinky rag or something. And right. it's just very nice to have that. And I think the key is that it's relatively small. It's, um, it doesn't, it's very simple in its shape. It doesn't get caught on anything. It's not too complicated. It doesn't have a lid. Um, so it works with everything else that's under the sink. And we've used that in two different houses now. So there you go. So I, it, would you say it has a patina? I just like Maybe. that word. I like, like to a use rest, it whenever. A rustic patina. Yes. 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 I think that just basically means tarnish, but you know, patina sounds yeah. um, a little more like better homes and gardens. Okay. So here's something I think is kind of a win in my big kitchen, my big disorganized kitchen, which I've talked about. Um, I sort of have these broad categories of things that make sense in my mind, but really took a long time to make sense in the kids' minds. And so I started to realize that like, they were not putting things away where they should go, but to them, like my, uh, my organizing strategy made no sense. So the way it's kind of shaken out, which really works, is that the pretty things go in the glass cabinets on the far wall. Okay. And the way I would define pretty is that it's like my, um, my, my vintage Pyrex. So anything mm-hmm. with like a print on it yep. and a small number of like brightly colored bowls and things. And like, um, like I've got a Fiesta Ware bowl and a couple other things. So, so they, and they kind of are all like, um, not color coded exactly, but they kind of coordinate. So there's like blue, green and blue, green. And so those Mm -hmm. are the pretties and the kids don't get it perfect, but I can actually tell sometimes they know they didn't do it right because they were being lazy. And I'll just be like, oh, does that bowl go there? And they're like, no. Okay. (laughs) Do you really think that's pretty dear? (laughs) Right. That's not pretty. That's just functionally okay. So the pretties are in that cabinet and then glass, which that's the thing that really messes with them. They sometimes think that I think all glass things are pretty. (laughs) And they absolutely are not, you know, they're, they're just glass. So like, I might have just kind of a, a plain looking like cobalt blue glass. I could go buy it, you know, Walmart right now. That's not a pretty, it just happens to look a little bit like the, um, the glass pretties anyway. So oh my gosh, that's one so funny. metal bakeware. So that would be cookie sheets, um, muffin tins, loaf mm-hmm. pans and cake hands. Mm-hmm. I think that's about it. Those go in a drawer. I found that that was really helpful because then I could just be like, nope, anything metal always goes in that drawer. Yep. Unless it's a potter pan, in which case it goes in the big cabinet. That's really throwing the kids off. So yeah. my point is, and then anything that's like plastic or more just like leftover storage. I don't like having a lot of plastic stuff, but I was saying earlier, it won't quit me. And I, it just keeps coming back. Um, all of those things have started to find their place. And it's really been, I know Sarah, you and I on the show talk about active management all the time. And the fact that you have to train your kids and yourself and it takes time. But I mean, like a year and a half into living in this house, I think we're finally getting it. Like, yeah, that this is where everything goes and they're not going to get it perfect every time. And some of the things are categorically a little odd. Like I know there are things that I firmly put in like the measuring, uh, compartment like department and the kids are like, but it just looks like a bowl. And you know, so some of it's just very arbitrary, but we're starting to get it. And yes. it's just been a lot of, you know, a lot of hard work on my part. A lot, a, a lot of, um, patience. I think exactly. anybody, I just had my mother-in-law here for two and a half weeks, which was great. She's a great mother-in-law to have, you know, in my house, no complaints. And she actually loves to help with dishes and she does a lot of dishes. And I always just kind of smile to myself when I find like something in a strange place because the I, it's a net win for me. Like somebody is there helping wipe my counters and put the dishes away so I can handle a few things that end up in a strange place, which it sounds like it's kind of your attitude with the kids. Yeah. Like they're making their best effort and you've got some broad categories in place and the rest you can you can get a, you right. know, let I, go. I'm not going to. Yeah, I'm not going to like get down on them because they thought this blue bowl was pretty and I disagree. Um, but like, I still have the way I want it done. Right. So I yeah. do sometimes end up going around and just kind of gently moving or like they don't group the Pyrex in the right patterns together. Yeah. That's a lot to expect. That's more on me. That's the way I see the pretties. So they can't care about that right now. No, they can't. I'm saying they, they cannot do. They, they will not be bothered. 
Okay. Well, here is a pantry or cupboard storage thing that I've also been doing forever. And that is to save all of my very large glass jars. Um, so of course you've got your ball jars and your Mason jars that you, you can buy them, um, relatively inexpensively. For me, we were shopping Costco. This is years ago now, eight or 10 years ago. We were shopping Costco a lot. So the jelly jars and the olive jars were both great because they were large in size and they also had a fairly wide mouth because a jar. So um, where I'm going with this is storage for things like nuts and um, dried cranberries and raisins. And I put all of my snacky stuff that I purchase into repurposed glass jars. And um, that has worked great for me for a long time, but first you got to get the jars. So it it was things like pasta sauces and big jars of um, jam and jelly, olives. I'm trying to think of what else comes in a really gl- large glass jar, but I, I started to know which things I wanted to buy because I liked the thing, but I also really liked the jar. Mm. So now mm-hmm. I have um, an extensive collection of glass jars, large ones. And when I come home from the grocery store, I have almost a zero tolerance policy for bags, small bags in my, <laughs> in my pantry storage. I had talked about the, they chips. are the devil. Yes, they are the terrible. devil. So chips are different, like, like tortilla chips or something you're going to go through relatively quickly. And they're, and the whole bag is large. That's different. I'm talking about things like raisins, almonds. Um, what else comes? I, I shop mostly at Trader Joe's. So anything that comes loose in a little like resealable zip, like zipper plastic bag, um, you I, I can't deal with that in my pantry. They don't stand up right. It looks messy. You forget what you have. So having the glass jars on hand and then I'm just really disciplined about it. When I come home from the grocery store, I put things into the jars. If I don't, if I don't have enough jars, I'll go to my little jar collection and get another one. Um, and then if I have to have to hold on to a little bag of something, I have um, like a basket that or a bin where the the miscellaneous bags go. So I've just been really um, kind of like zero tolerance about bags in the pantry. And it just is visually pleasing. And I didn't spend a bunch of money on on containers. They don't all look the same. Like they're not uniform. I didn't go to the container store. I do have a couple Lazy Susans, which is going to be one of my future tips. But that mm-hmm. also works really well to have a bunch of glass jars on a small Lazy Susan because you can just spin around and see what you need. Well, I love that. And I have a question for you. My mm-hmm. very first foray into a Costco was uh, March 2020. Never forget yes, it. I recall. Um, actually, it might have been. No, it was March. It was right after pandemic time started. And I was like, I got to get everything. I got to get all the bulk everything. And that's when I bought my huge bags of pancake mix and such. But one of one of the more ridiculous purchases I made that day was a huge jar of peaches floating in syrup. Uh-huh. Because yeah, I, see. I know that. I know exactly which Costco jar of peaches. It was beautiful. About. It was we don't even really eat that many peaches, although Owen was so excited. He's like, I love peaches. You never buy peaches like this. I was like, and I never will again. So <laughs> that's what Costco will do to you. You come home right. with giant things that you don't normally buy. Well, and the thing is, once you've opened a jar of peaches, you have to eat them pretty fast. So it's not like I had a a giant cobbler I was planning to make. I don't really, (laughs) I think I put it on ice cream and I actually made it, might've made a crumble. Um, And I think I used some in pork. Anyway, my point is I have this jar. It's gorgeous. It's been sitting in my pantry and I want to use it, but it's kind of an odd shape in that the mouth is really small. Yeah. Almost more like a jelly jar, but with a big body. And so it almost has to be decorative. Like I, I, the, the things that could go in that would be things like popcorn, like small kernely yes, things that you could pour that, that you don't have to pour. reach your hand into. Yes, exactly. So I might need to think on that a little bit. Yeah. So I have put, um, oh, I've put so many things in jars. You can get inspiration from my kitchen. Cause I do, I love repurposing jars and I do know what you mean about the smaller mouth is tricky for That's why the yeah. olive jars and the um, strawberry jam d- jars from Costco were my, those would, that's what I have the most of now. So yeah, you need the big broad one. Yeah. Well, along the line of containers, I also have a couple of antique, I think they were peanut butter jars that I got at an antique store and I use those for a lot of different things, but I also have, um, containers. They're like plat hard plastic containers that have these lids that kind of, you push them down and they vacuum yep. seal shut. And they're like rectangular, but rounded. And the lids are all, I believe, all interchangeable or maybe certain sizes are interchangeable. I use them. I mean, I've had them for more than 10 years and they're still going strong. I use them for flour and sugar and powdered sugar and brown sugar and popcorn and rice. And like, I just use them for everything. And they've never really started to fall apart. They just held up really well and they just get the job done. And they 
fit nicely. Like they don't yeah. waste space at all, which sometimes rounded things do. So I'm a big fan. I am a big fan of those too. And they're a little pricey if I remember. Mm -hmm. Are they the OXO, OXO brand? I believe the sure. ones I have are OXO. Yeah, but I've really had them since probably 2010. Yeah. So long time. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. If they, if it seems pricey, I can also vouch for having had them for a long time and they also stack well. So I have a couple mm -hmm. that aren't as big, but they're like cube, they're like shorter. And so you can stack them and that also works well for a space saving. So I would agree. Nice. Um, my next one I alluded to, and that is having a few different lazy Susans around. And I use them in like more places than you might think. We like to have one in the fridge for like very small fridge containers, like up on a top shelf of the fridge. Um, I have one in a cupboard and like two more in our quote unquote pantry. It's not a walk in pantry, but it's these larger cupboards. So I think lazy Susans are they're very inexpensive and you can kind of move them around your kitchen depending on what like your needs are. But yeah, it's really helpful for anything small or if you're putting a lot of small things in on a pantry shelf, it just sort of contains it. Um, so it's less yeah. about the spinning and more about like, OK, this space of this circular space is for, you know, these like vinegar jars or whatever. Um, so special man friend has a little lazy Susan right on his dining room table. Mm -hmm. that has all, I mean, they're like a hot sauce family and stuff. Yeah. And so there's all the condiment, the table condiments, which I think is interesting. And it's not, I actually think it was something purchased with that's attached to a lazy, lazy Susan. So it's not just the suit, like it's not just the spinny thing. It's also like a little caddy container kind of. thing, a yeah. caddy. Yes. Um, which has been interestingly, uh, useful. Wouldn't really have thought mm -hmm. of that. Now, my mother-in-law, ex-mother-in-law now, um, their house was, had a teeny tiny little kitchen. And I think it was built like in either the late 60s or early 70s. And I remember her having panic moments about us using Lazy Susan and talking about how terribly you could get your fingers pinched in it. And so now I have oh. this weird paranoia. But I think those are the ones built into the corner cabinet, yeah. like the lower corner. And you can get them spinning while you're looking for your, I don't know, ragu or whatever. <laughs> and if you get your finger in the wrong spot, you can really mess it up. But it sounds like you're not talking about the apparatus. No, you're talking about the apparatus, not the not the place where it's tucked away. Right. So mine are not built into anything. I bought right. them at the store and they look they're about the size of a, a small dinner plate, not even a full yeah. dinner plate, like like a petite dinner plate. And they are just rubber on top. There's no mechanism to get anything caught anywhere. You'd have to reach underneath. So they just like yeah. sit flat and it's a flat circle. I think this might have been, this paranoia may have also had something to do with the fold out drawer or uh, sorry, door to the cabinet. Mm -hmm. Remember those were a big thing in those like mm -hmm. tiny kitchens in mid-century. I think it had something to do with that as well. So um, I would also like to know who this Susan was and why <laughs> she has been maligned through time. Right. Being so lazy. Yeah. Why no lazy Maybe. Marys, no lazy Harriets. No. no. <sighs> Um, okay. So I've mentioned my pantry, my big weird pantry, and I have found that active management keeps it under control. And so that's not really a purchase or even a system so much as to say, I've just realized that because it's so big and so kind of odd, and because this has been such a weird year and some change with like the way my shopping habits have been that I really have to be in there cleaning it out like every weekend. And yeah. so I guess if you had to say a tip or a strategy, it would be every time you bring things in, take a few minutes to get some stuff out or at least reorganize what's there. Yeah. Um, and I do that in both my fridge and my pantry and it really does help. Yeah, I think that's a very smart idea. And it's so overwhelming to do if you haven't done it in a while. You know what I mean? Yeah, but you can so, do it a little bit at a time. Like every yeah. time you, yeah, every time you like uh, bring home groceries for the next month, you could just tidy up one shelf of your fridge and one shelf in your pantry or wherever you keep your food. Like, right. you know, it, it's, it doesn't have to be all at the same time, but even just like, honestly, going through your cereal boxes and making sure they mm -hmm. actually have cereal in them yes. and maybe make a kid <laughs> break the boxes down and put them in the recycle bin for you. Like just even those things, they do, they do start to just get you toward where you're trying to go. Yep. Totally. Agreed. Well, I have a little product recommendation in addition to the lazy Susan. And I just saw you way, put it in the outline. I have one of yeah. those too. Yeah. These are great. I, I felt like I needed to put a picture in case you didn't know what I was talking about. And then listeners it's hopeless because they can't see us. 
Um, but this is for a cupboard or, or a cabinet where you're trying to, or, or a pantry shelf where you're trying to get more out of the space you have. And it looks like a little set of stairs. The one I threw in here is rubberized and like kind of nonstick, but I also have one that's kind of that um, mesh metal. Either way it works, like either one works fine. Um, where I have found it really useful is for small baking items. So like bottles of vanilla, baking powder, baking soda, those things are, they're short. So to to use a whole, to use the full height of your cupboard and not be able to use the, um, you know, the height and you're losing all that like negative space, if that makes sense, because they're not tall like a bottle of oil or vinegar. Right. Um, so this you can you can stair step your little bottles and you can see things really nice. And it looks so pretty when you kind of like organize it really nicely. So I've used those both in a pantry when I had a pantry and then also in a cupboard. Um, and these are super inexpensive. So I'll, I'll link up to everything like the Lazy Susan and this and stuff in the show notes. So where I used my little I mean, I haven't had it. I don't believe I still have it, but I have had it for sure. Um, I seem to remember using that in my freezer to store breast milk, like way oh. back in the day when I was pumping a lot. Um, when Jacob was born, I pumped a lot. And when Clara was born, she was in the NICU for like 10 days. And I had so much breast milk that I'd pumped. And I believe I used it to organize it by, so I could see the dates on the bottles. Yeah, that's super smart. Um, and then after that, it kind of moved out to like, after I was done with like the frozen breast milk phase, I, it moved out to next to the sink and I would have all of the little bottles and sippy cups and the sippy cup lids and valves. And then it would just kind of keep them all organized. And then at mm-hmm. some point it moved into a cabinet where I put spices, I think on it. And then yeah. I guess it just, it's lost to time now, but probably in my last house, I would have never room for it, but <laughs> Right. And I know like there's the whole like Gretchen Rubin, are you an overbuyer or an underbuyer for things for anything? But with things like this, I'm an underbuyer. I always think I should be able to organize this cupboard without a gadget or a tool or like a, right. a separator. But I, I mean, I'm here to say that a few pieces of plastic that are specially designed to help you get control of your space or or maximize your space. Like even if you tend more, I'm, I can be very frugal and very like, uh, you know, oh, that's not necessary. That's like extra, but it can really help. Like there's a reason there's a market for things like this is because it's helpful. Yeah. Okay. So that brings me to my last one, which kind of plays off of your last one, because you were talking about spices and vanilla and stuff like that. Um, I have been using these little bins in the pantry that I actually believe, I mean, I've had them for so long, I couldn't really tell you where I bought them, but I think it was an office supply store like Staples Mm -hmm. Um, because they don't look like something you would usually use in in a kitchen. They're like that fake leather and <laughs> brown. Oh yeah. And they have the little placard on the front, like you would write something on. Yeah. So they, they really, I think I bought them as, um, almost like card catalog kind of organization. They, they look like uh-huh. you could put index cards in them. Like that's how big okay. they are, but they have been great to hold. I have two of them and one of them has all the things that go, I don't bake that often, but when I do, I like to have all my stuff together. So like a bag of chocolate chips, my vanilla extract, birthday candles, sprinkles, um, food dyes. I sometimes will have like a, like a squeezy tube of frosting to write with stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It's all in one. And then the other one is kind of just like a holdover for like sauces and spice packets. Um, oftentimes I buy seasonings in little packets. I don't always like if I'm at a spice store or like I hoard them from HelloFresh. Sometimes if Mm -hmm. I don't end up using all of it in a recipe, I'll just hang on to it. And so it's just so nice to, to just think, oh man, I really, gosh, is there like a little, you know, a little bag of cashews somewhere. Oh yeah. It's in here. Or like a little bag of like some Chipotle powder. Uh Uh-huh. I have Mm -hmm. it. If I just stuck that stuff in my pantry, it would be lost forever. So it's nice to have. And I just kind of keep it like with like, and I've thought before, maybe I'd add one more at some point and have like a different category, but I actually think those two categories, having only two that's enough. Yeah. Keeps it from getting overwhelming or too, you know, like just too out of control. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that's my last one. And I mean, again, that's like, I fell into that. It wasn't even, it wasn't even a solution I purchased for the kitchen. I bought it for something else and didn't use it for that. Yeah. And then thought, well, this will, I'll just put this in my pantry. And that's a really good point. I have, I have these little baskets that have worked really well for things like that. And I think I got them in the target dollar section and they were meant for like kids toys or kids, um, art yeah. supplies or something. So it definitely does not have to be from a kitchen organization line, you know, that's celebrity branded probably by somebody, Martha or somebody, not that there's anything wrong with that, but 
there's a lot of repurposing of bins and baskets. And it's, it's, there's something really satisfying to be like, ah, oh, this is like exactly how I needed to contain this and a little, it can make a big difference. So, yeah. Well, my last one is something I did when we moved into this house and I just bought, I think on Amazon, a big roll of that rubberized drawer liner stuff where it's like kind of, um, there's little holes, like, like something you'd, uh, so that the water can drain through or it could get moist. You know what I'm talking about? It's not a drawer yeah. liner where it's like paper, but it's this no, kind of it's spongy. it's like rubberized and it's, yes. um, it almost like is a like, grid. it's like a, me- like, yes, or mesh, like a yes. rubber mesh or something. Yep. yep. Exactly. So it's black and it came in a roll, which was great because I can cut it for any size that I want. And I've used it in a lot of places. Um, it, there's something that just feels cleaner about putting that at the bottom of your under sink cabinet um, because anything gross just, I mean, the gross doesn't go away. It just goes down and it feels like that surface stays a little bit cleaner. Um, but I've also put it in, we have some drawers that are really wide. They're like double wide drawers. So inside we might have a knife block and some other things and it keeps things from sliding around. So it's more of like the nonstick is what I'm going for there rather than just the, um, the non non moist or, or right. like drying. So it works for everything. It keeps things a little drier, a little cleaner and from sticking. And it's the kind of thing that like, I could have done that in my four previous kitchens and just never did. And I was, it was like a really good purchase and I still keep the roll and I'm like, Oh, I'm going to put some of this in this drawer or whatever. So I love that. I, I have some that came in my house, which kind of creeped me out a little bit when I first moved in. I'm like, I should strip this out and like replace it with my own, but I just didn't. Cause I was in a hurry. And yeah. now I kind of don't want to strip it out because I don't have anything to replace it with. And yeah. I like it. Like, I like the job it does. So yes. at this point, only thing in it is my family's germs anyway. Right. Exactly. It's been way too long for anyone else's germs to be clinging to it anymore. Exactly. So, yeah. All right. Well, this was fun. It makes me want to go spiff up in the kitchen. And I'm excited for you to see. My you kitchen. still have time to do that before I come if you want. Or we can do it together. I know. Yeah. I don't, I don't think like we'll be time. organizing my kitchen together. We have much more fun <laughs> antics to get up to. Yes. I'm sure you're right. Um, I wanted to let everybody know that this Friday, we have kind of a companion to the Voices episode that aired last Friday. So last Friday, I interviewed Kelly Hiltz, who's a kindergarten teacher, and we talked about kids returning to the classroom, whether it's this spring or maybe not until the fall. And we were focused on the littlest school children. Um, And then this Friday, I'm talking to a listener who's a college professor, and we have a really interesting conversation about what distance learning and online learning was like at the upper education level. We talk a lot about college, but a little bit about high school and incoming college students too. And she has some really interesting thoughts about the future of academic learning at the college level and what things will take forward uh, from Mm. what we learned about remote learning that were actually really good things for young adults. There's some accessibility and some there's, there's a lot of good that came out of universities being forced to learn distance learning. But then we also talk yeah. about what was missing and what how she envisions um, getting back to a post pandemic space. So if you have older kids and you're kind of wondering, like, like, what is college ever going to look like again, which I think is a really good question. Um, and also just if you've been on Zoom a lot yourself and kind of are thinking about like, what are the and it's not all Zoom. I know that like, you know what I mean? Like on the on the distance communication. It was a really interesting conversation about what we want to take forward from that and what we want to leave behind. So that'll be out this yeah. Friday and it's just a little bonus for everybody. I'm excited about that. Um, and I think that everyone should tune into our Instagram because I think that's probably when, when we get up to our antics, I think that's where people are going to see it, right? Yes, they will be yeah. demanding the antics on the Insta. The antics will be happening uh, <laughs> at the mom hour on, uh, on Insta. So check us out there and we will talk to you soon. Bye. The Mom Hour is brought to you by partners like The Essential Calendar. The Essential Calendar makes beautiful, minimalist, poster-sized calendars that show an entire season at a glance so you can see and plan for the big picture. If you're looking ahead to 2024 and have big plans you want to see all in one place, visit theessentialcalendar.com slash themomhour. You'll save 10% off your purchase when you visit that link or use code themomhour at checkout. Again, that's 10% off our favorite seasonal calendars at theessentialcalendar.com slash the mom hour. The mom hour is brought to you by partners like Chatbooks. Chatbooks makes it beyond easy to create beautiful photo books by importing your digital photos from anywhere, Instagram, Facebook, Google Photos, or directly from your phone. 
The books come in a variety of sizes with beautiful cover options and binding styles to choose from, and they start at just $15. Plus, we have a great deal just for our listeners. Use code THEMOMHOUR20 to save 20% off your purchase. Just download the Chatbooks app and use code THEMOMHOUR20 to save 20%. 